Hello and a big happy new year, everyone. My name is Rick McLaughlin. I'm the lead commentator for mountain bike over at Warner Brothers Discovery Sports. And I'm joined today by one of the biggest names the sport of downhill has ever produced, none other than Greg Minar, live from his own home in his house. Greg, the UCI Mountain Bike World Series off-season can be a funny thing, can't it? There are some seasons that it feels like nothing's happened. Everyone's stayed in the same teams. And there are other years where it feels like everyone has moved. This is very much the latter of this season. And one of the big talking points is yourself. You've changed team. Go on, give us the big one. Give us a big scoop. Who are you riding for in 2024? Hey, Rico. Thanks a lot for um, hosting us for the, the community here at Hot Chile. It's, um, um, you know, thanks again for, for, for joining us. It's, um, it's been a hell of an off season, you know. Christmas kind of just flew flew by. Um, I sat here behind my desk, just uh, grinding away. Um, the news is just broken. It's it it is Norco bikes, and I'm really excited about the move. It's um, it's a great opportunity to to build a team, um, get my hands dirty, set up the team structure, and and really try and um, create a team that 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 focuses highly on performance and, and that's my main goal and um still going to continue to race which is great I, I felt like 23 wasn't quite the year for me it, it you know it, it didn't seem to to roll smoothly right it it there were lots of mechanicals you know Fort William was going to be a, a great part of my season where I felt like this was a great time to retire and you know when I got to Fort William it, it just was a disastrous race for me and an event and um I decided to keep racing and and got to the end of the season. And I just felt like it's not really a, a a way to end it. Um, I've had a lot of fun through the twenty odd years of racing, and the stress I had in twenty three just just wasn't fun at all. And it's not really about results, but it, it's about um, just having a good time, really. And when you have a good time, results do come for sure. But the stress levels are way too high for me to to. Uh, to retire on I think I'd be resentful to, to retire on a year like that how did how did Norco come about then um he tell us more about that I, think, I mean it came as a big surprise to a lot of people in the, the mountain bike community yeah it was I mean it's uh, it's funny it's uh, friendships and go a long way and um a, a really good friend of mine had moved from Oakley she worked at Oakley we you know, we we worked together at Oakley for for quite some time. Um, she was the VP of marketing at Oakley. She went on to to some other brands and then ended up at Norco. She's new to the mountain bike um, industry, and you know, she was bouncing a few ideas off me and 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 what have you. And um, you know, I just came to the point where I was like, well, she's I've just fallen into a situation where I, you know I need to look for a team. And she said, well, why, why don't you why don't you come to Norco? And at first I was like, yeah, right. You know, it's, um, it's not really a brand that I know well, you know, I feel like it's been around, but I don't know much about it. And, um, she went to tell me about this engineering team and my goodness, it, it's incredible. I mean, I was blown away. It's, um, we, we lose a lot of, a lot of great engineers in the bike industry to big industries like motor industry and, and, and what have you. And, and when you, when you look at the Norco engineers, they they all come from the motor industry. You know, the, the lead engineer, David Cox, comes from McLaren uh, Automotive. Um, then you've got Adrian Ward, who's been in Formula One for seven years. I mean, these are like guys who know what they're doing. I mean, to me, it was super impressive. Not only that, they've got a separated suspension um, section in, in Norco where they develop and, and play around a lot of suspension. I mean, I've never seen that before. You know, uh, in-house dynoing and um, suspension setup. I mean, that's incredible. So, as soon as I got to learn a little bit more about Norco and what what they built over the last three or so years, man, I was sold on it. And tell us, when you look back at your time with the Santa Cruz Syndicate, what were your your standout moments and? You know, what are you most proud of? I mean, 16 years on one team is pretty much unheard of in mountain biking, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, when I joined the syndicate, I'd had a I had a rough time. You know, it, from 2001 was my breakthrough season where I'd won the first World Cup overall, my first World Cup overall. Um, at the end of that season, I went into an invitation race and dislocated my shoulder. And um, 
all the way through to the end of 2007, I was struggling with the shoulder injury. And uh, finally in Fort William, it all came apart. I had a crash midway through, funny enough, at the World Championship. And uh, dislocated my shoulder, but kept racing and got to the bottom um, in fourth. And but my shoulder was absolutely destroyed. So that's to reconstruct my shoulder. And and that's when the Honda team had collapsed. And I'd made this, um, Rob Roscoe, I'd met actually watching Slovenia, uh, watching the World Cup in Slovenia, the final round. And we're drinking some beers on the finish line. And um, he was asking me a bit about my shoulder and what, what my plans are going forward. And and it ended up being um, the Honda team collapsing and Rob giving me a chance to go to the syndicate, which was a great opportunity to be with, with PD and, and uh, change brands. But it was also like a, a second chance in my career, you know, for the previous um, seven years, eight years, it's, I'd, I'd been struggling with the shoulder injury and now having to have it reconstructed, Rob was taking a bit of a gamble, bringing me in. So that opening season in 2008 was incredible. You know, my shoulder was was a lot stronger. Um, I had a great a great season racing of racing. You know, Sam Hill and I head to head the whole way through, and and just managing to to pip Sam in the end to to win the the World Cup overall. So, I mean, that was quite a highlight for me moving to the syndicate and having my opening season uh, being a World Cup winning season. Um, but then, I mean, there's there's three world championships in there. Um, you know, there's uh, Leo Gang, then just behind me in the, in the mountains in the, in the window there, the the world championship in Peter Marisburg and, and then by the soul. So, you know, those three are, those three are pretty special too. Who was your, I guess this is kind of two questions. Who, it's all right if they're the same person, but it's also all right if they're different people. Who was your favorite teammate on there during all those years? And is there one that pushed you harder than others? I guess they, they mightn't be the same person, but if they are. Um, yeah, I've been asked that a lot recently. It's it's so hard, you know, through all my racing, I've had such great teammates. Um, you know, going back to global racing to Honda, like I've really, really been blessed with, with great teammates. I'm going to the syndicate, you know, when I the first year was we had Steve Peep, who is a longtime friend. You know, Steve's wife and myself raced on Animal Orange together, and that's how I was introduced to Steve. Um, and we 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 we've remained, remained friends since then. So um, then there was Nathan Rennie, and Nathan and I were were juniors at the same age, so we we came up racing together. And then there was Rat Boy, uh, Josh Braslin, and um, you know I think in the in the beginning years of my my stint at Syndicate. Steve was definitely pushing me pretty hard. Um, and it worked really well because we had trained quite quite a lot together. We'd help each other on tracks up, like through training. And then, you know, the race is the race. And whoever did better, we were stoked, you know, we were helping each other out. Um, and then Ratboy came and Ratboy um, found his groove in, in elite racing. And what was special of Ratboy is it was he was so deceiving. He's deceivingly fast, you know, incredibly smooth. I mean, I remember watching him pedal out of the gates in uh, Montsinan one year. Everyone was like powering down the first straight and he uh, took a pedal or two out the gate and sat down in the tuck. I mean, he was creeping to the first corner and he comes through the first split and then he's up and it was just, he the had this amount, time, it, the amount of times he'd appear on camera and you think he had a puncture or the chain yeah. was off the bike or something and the split would come up and he'd be two seconds off and you'd like, he's just how he, how he did it, I don't know. It was crazy. He, he looked like he was off the back, just cruising down, and this time was incredible. I mean, the the way he cornered and threw the bike actually reminded me a lot of Nathan Rennie. You know, Nathan Rennie was one of, the, to me, one of the best um, corner like guys who could ride a flat corner or just corner really hard. And, and so Josh was was very similar to that, um, and, and just carry so much speed out. So you know, in the syndicate, definitely um, in those early years, Rat Boy changed things up, and then you had like. Loris and, and Luca come in to, to play. Um, two di very different riding styles, you know, like Loris popping and bouncing everywhere. Luca really smooth and tight and, and solid line. And, uh, and, and they, they also kind of gave me another kickstart to get going again. It's a difficult thing, teammates in downhill, because it is an individual sport, but in any sport where you're on a team of people, even if it's against the clock, you always want to go faster than the person who's got the same equipment and the same opportunities and the same 
set up as you have is a difficult dynamic because you know you obviously obviously won't be friendly with these people too you got to see them at every meal time three times a day yeah you want to be friendly right hey? it's uh but it, it, it can get tricky you you look you you know you 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 traveling you you living together you you racing against each other you know um it, it's it's never easy it's but I, I think they did well with that in the syndicate i think those first few years we um it was well managed you know we um we worked together as a team we raced individually but we were really supportive of, of each other's results i think i think that was unique with with the syndicate syndicate back then um uh, it's a it is a tough dynamic you know and there's a you know you can joke around and go geez if you if if you if you're not if you're not the fastest of the day at least be fastest in your team right it, it takes a bit of pressure off but um you know it, it can be tricky for sure cap okay right well i've held off as long as i can as a complete bike geek as somebody who's just fascinated by bikes downhill race bikes in particular what are yeah. your impressions of your new race bike, your new Norco? Tell us about, you know, the setup. How have you been working with it? I mean, it's already under Gracie Hemstreet last season. Mark Wallace, of course, you know, a really well raced, as you say, really, you know, intensively developed bike. What were your impressions as Greg Menard the first time you got on it? Yes, yeah, so you know, I go back to the, this engineering team and this race department. It, it's these guys set this bike up as close as they could to 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 suit me or you know what i've what i what i look for in a bike they try to set this bike up for me so on the first day on the first day of testing within five runs i was i was going times were, were going really good um you know it normally takes me a bit of time to to set up a bike um in terms of like handlebars you know, I, I always have an angle finder for my brake levers. So I know 27 degrees, that's the angle of my brake levers. But finding that bar roll is sometimes quite tricky. And uh, we got to the end of the test there and Tom, uh, Tom Duncan, my mechanic, goes, well, you didn't adjust your bars once. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And uh, one of the things we're concerned about on the bike, because, on a, you know, the bike's, the bike's shorter than, than, than any bike I've ridden recently. Um, but the bottom bracket to top of the head tube is, is about is slightly shorter than, than what I raced in 23. Um, so the bike kind of it allows me to stand more tall rather than be stretched. And um, and that's kind of what I've been looking for. Is Do you think that, do you think that shape's changed? Because we have seen the likes of Jackson, Laurie, like the younger generation, they do seem to stand like more upright on the bikes than... The more experienced like the older dudes do you think that's yeah something that's i mean it? it's something that i've been trying to do it's um it's uh you know i, I raise my bars as high as i can but it, it doesn't really get me there um and so you know when you look at like a jackson he stands just straight up and tall it's really um, noticeable isn't it when you watch those race runs back yeah. from last season he's kind of stood just in between the wheels almost upright yeah and it's it, it's really hard to 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 kind of replicate you know when your legs are so long like mine you pivot from your hips and you lean forward but for now i, I felt really upright on the bike um, and i think that had a lot to do with me not having to adjust the bars because i, I didn't have all this weight through the front end I, I didn't feel like i was um i was having to control this bike through a heavy handed front and um i could kind of stand up tall and, and just look ahead and and, and let it go so yeah, I, I was super impressed. I mean, this this down bike, and you know, it was only a day or two ago when I messaged the guys going, "Well, wow, uh, I didn't actually even know what this down bike is called." So we bought, before we do an interviews, can you let me know what it's called? And it's like, no, well, they haven't quite named it. They call it like a, a downhill prototype. On the prototype, it used to be the range, didn't it? The, the old bike was called the range, but I noticed uh, in a lot of the stuff I've read and the prep for this, it's just like all the bikes last year were just called development mules and prototypes, and they haven't really settled on a name for it. Yeah, and so what was so impressive to me and and really unique in a in a in a, in a race bike is that every part of this bike can be adjusted um, without affecting any other part of the bike. So. Um, it, it like everything is adjustable independently. So if I want to adjust um, where the idler sits, 
I can move that into four different positions. If I want to change the um, the 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 suspension, like to to have a more linear or more progressive setup, I, I can do that by without affecting bottom bracket, without affecting head angle, just solely focus on on that part of the bike, which is which is really cool for a racer. You know, when I when I heard about that, I was like, you know, this bike's going to be pretty easy to 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 fit because anything I don't like, I can completely adjust and leave everything else. And um, that's that's unique for me. I, I don't have any bikes where you can adjust the head angle and not affect any other part of the bike. Normally, it's a compromise. Normally, you have to adjust shock rate and then your bottom bracket's going to drop or increase and then your head angle is head angle's going to slacken or steepen. So you're always compromising. Where um, These guys have designed this bike to 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 really focus on on um, being able to adjust and 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 move in, in certain areas and, and focus independent and independent areas of the bike. As in terms of benchmarking against you know your your old bike and stuff, how how are you doing that? Is it a timed process? You know, do you have a you know a set of tracks that you know times on, or is it all feel and see your pants stuff? How do you sort of get it to where you need it to be? Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of both, really. It's it's time, it's feel. Um, you know, you can you can put down some times on a track, but um, if you, it's really hard to to know what what level you're pushing at, and so you really need to feel that level and, and replicate that level time and time again, and then push in certain areas and and feel it out. But you know, time is super important, and 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 this was another another area where these guys just totally excel. You know, we finished this these few days of testing and um i get these test sheets and it's like you know from every setting that was adjusted to what the bike was i mean it was like a uh, a page per per run test sheet like this is uh these guys are serious about racing and um that, that's impressive it's they, they definitely have this culture of of performance and and that's spilling out into this race team and and I think that that's really cool. It's that's that excites me. What about uh, parts um, setup package? Different brands you're working with is that kind of still up in the air? Yeah, we were certain. You know, it's um, we 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 kicked this off. I mean, the season only ended in in October, right? And um, so middle of October, we kind of knew what was going on. You know, we had November to to work through things, and and you know into December, so. One of the things I had to do was was really feel um, where we needed to go suspension wise. So um, testing Rock Shock, testing Fox, understanding um, you know that that dictates quite a lot on on what components and what brakes and drive chain you're going to use. And that must so be, that must be really interesting because you spent quite a long time on on one set of products, really, haven't you? Has it been interesting to try the other stuff now? It, it was. I mean, and again, these guys came with it like. You know, I wasn't setting up the bike at all. The bike was set up. I was just adjusting to fine tune it, um, and uh, that made the 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 testing really effective. Um, and so, so you know, both both suspension setups worked really well. Um, but for me, the the handling on the Fox chassis was was a deciding factor. I find it really nimble. Um, being able to just um, turn the bike super easily. Um, definitely makes a big difference. So it's um, you know, that that was a, a a big deciding factor for me. Um, tell us about the team then. Is it as straightforward as you're dropping in as a team member? Are you going to have other roles and responsibilities in the in the team itself? Um, what can you tell us? Yeah, it's um the the, the way that I'm set up is is I'm directing this team. Um, and, 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 and that was kind of cool. I feel like I've got years of experience and, and with, and with this whole culture of performance that I kind of, uh, our worlds collided, I felt like this was a, a real good way to set up and, and structure a team for, you know, not only myself to race my final years, but also for, for the next generation, you know, we've got Gracie and Lucas coming up. You know, giving them a, a an incredible platform to race off, I think will be um, first. You know, first prize, um, and, and and just kind of pushing the, the that experience. It's um, 
it's really important that we we push the boundaries on on how far we we can support the riders from track side to um, technical aspect to team structure and uh, I, I think that that's going to be super cool setting up. I mean, we 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 halfway there. We not we don't have far to go. You're also working with uh, Norco's Young Talent Program, the Source. Uh, is that something that sort of tempted you over as well? Does that play into what you want to sort of go on to? Yeah, I think you know when I finish racing, I'll I'll continue to 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 direct this this program. Um, uh, I think once you when you're a competitive person and and you stop competing, you need something that's going to help you drive forward, right? And I, I think that will spill over into trying to help this team really squeeze every drop out, trying to, you know, try and find all, you know, different ways that we can help track side to, to really support the riders. Um, the sources is, is, is definitely, um, it's definitely a great idea. You know, we've got some, some young talent coming through. Um, we've also got one of the fastest engineers racing on the team this year. Uh, Kirk will be joining us and, uh, he he had a, a great ride in Monsonan, and uh, he does a lot of testing with the the rest of the engineering team um, in the off season. So it's um, having all these guys join in is is it's it's going to benefit us. You know, we're going to learn so much, and 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 hopefully, you know, just create something that's really unique and, and kind of challenge the the teams. Like you look at like Specialized and and the Commensal team. I mean, they've they've really leveled up to to track side performance to to tr- supporting those riders in a in a different way um and, and you know I, I don't think or copying is the way to do it uh, i feel like there's there's other ways that we can squeeze more out of performance than than trying to copy an idea that we don't actually know what they they aiming at or what they you know they've got guys inside the track timing we don't know what they're timing uh, or who they're timing um but you know we're working on ways that we can really have um, more technical support towards riders. Is it, it? I mean, just from talking to you this afternoon, it feels like this is a much bigger project and a much bigger thing than simply joining another race team to race for them. Is that what tempted you to Norco? Was it this opportunity that you seem to be already talking about a lot of things that feel like a logical pathway to the next part of your career? Yeah, you know, I we, I, was, I was thinking about it a while back, and it's you know I haven't really been involved in, in supporting riders and and trying to structure something for a rider to really excel in. You know, I've I've only ever been a racer, and I feel with all these years of experience, you you get an excitement, it, you 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 feel fulfilled when you can help someone, um, and 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 when when Orca came to me and said, you know. We want to build the fastest team with the fastest bike, and we want your knowledge and your input to doing this. Um, I've never really had that input, and so so this was a, a time for me to to almost give back. Um, you know, we uh, in my years of racing, there I haven't really had had an opportunity to do that. You know, we I've worked on on stuff locally in South Africa where we've run. Um, you know, a race series through through our bike shop for for years, probably fifteen years. You know, all the the gravity, um, enduro, and downhill series, our local series, we've supported and and kind of helped put together. So we've supported racing in a different way, um, but getting into World Cup racing and really um, passing down experiences is is, is going to be new to me, and it's so far it's been quite fulfilling. First race of the season, Fort William. First race of the UCI Downhill World Cup season. It's a track you've won at no fewer than seven times. You're turning up this year on a new bike, new team, different role. How big and how different a race is that going to be for you on the first weekend of May? Yeah, I'm excited for it. eh? I mean, the last time I, I went to Fort William on a new bike was probably 2004 when I went on Honda. And uh, you know that was just a, a funny time. You know, I'd signed to this this big brand, and and we had to focus on American National Series. So I went to you know there was only a few races that didn't clash, and Fort William was one. And I went there and won on this new bike, and then had to go race the rest of the American National Series. So 
yeah, look at a time like that, like a missed opportunity. I, I think I could have had a good run at the World Cup that year. But I, I th that's what came to mind when I when I thought, you know, going back to Fort William, starting the season there on the Norco, what's it going to be like? And I'm pretty excited. I, I feel like this bike's working for me. I feel um, I feel like I've got like something really special working with these engineers. That you know, um, when when a company's got an advanced suspension like sensor within the engineering department, that's these guys are serious about you know not only racing but building quality bikes. Um, you know, they they dyno in all all the suspension to make sure that. Everything I'm riding is within range of of what I like and and what I, I want to feel. Um, this is the level that they're going, so uh, I'm I'm excited to get racing. And and you know Fort William couldn't come quick enough. You know I have to lose a bit of weight. And let's be honest. I mean the off season's tough at 42 years old. It's January. We all have to lose a bit of weight. That's fine. You got plenty. <laughs> yeah, I'm work, I'm working on it. this. Is my first beer. I mean it's been such a stressful day. It's my first beer in in at least uh, nine days. So, um, but I, I think it was well worth it. Uh, UCI Downhill World Championships this year, Val pa or Pal Val Pal Aaron Sal, excuse me, yeah. and Laura just round the corner from where you live there. That's, that's kind of a home world for you, isn't it? I yeah. mean, last year kind of was in Fort William. You've done so much winning there. The crowd love you so much there. But Andorra, you have a lot of friends there. You have a big, you know, group of mates there. That must be a there must be a big red circle on the calendar around that one as well. Oh, for sure. It has to be. I mean, it is my uh, my new home. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot of friends. I mean, we had a great time last year. You know, uh, Thibaut had probably tipped me in the end. Um, and we got a little bit lucky in the weather too. Um, but it, it was one of those race weekends where I, I managed to, to maintain the momentum through that first um, time session. And it didn't really happen at many other races. So um, yeah, that was a, it was a good weekend. And that's definitely going to be a, a half focal point for for me in, in twenty four. How how important was that result there last season for you? Second place, just over a tenth of a second, which is obviously nothing. You know, you had such a bad run of luck at different races, different stuff breaking, mechanicals, just bad bad luck. But in Andorra, it felt like that was the affirmation. It was there was confirmation that the speed wasn't the issue. The speed was there. Was that a, a, whenever you look back on things, was that a big moment? Yeah, it was like the only moment, the only good moment I had all season. Um, you know, if if I look at the season, I think my my next best result was like a seventh or sixth in in Leger. I don't think there was anything else. Um, I, you know, for William, there was so much. There was so much stress going up and leading into Fort William and, and trying to make sure my bike was ready. Um, that took it out of me. I took a week off and, and went on a holiday, um, actually with Steve and some other friends. And, you know, we didn't touch bikes for a week and got back to Andorra feeling really fresh. And, and, um, I actually had my, my long time, um, long time friend and, and chiropractor Lawrence for in there. And, um, you know, he was just uh, super helpful, just trying to help me focus and, and get relaxed and, and focus, you know, on, on not what was going on around me, but more what was going on on the track. And everything just worked out pretty good there. But um, to me, like a disappointing season, you know, I, I like consistency and, and to have like a second and a seventh, it's not, it's not really a good hand of cards. Um, what do you what do you make of the the current level of the UCI downhill World Cup at the minute? As you know, from a fan's point of view, when I mean, we just talked about you losing a race by just over a tenth of a second, it feels like that level, like the there isn't room for a compromise in setup or a compromise in approach, or it feels like all those, as you said, the guys timing stuff at the side of the track, like every little thing's to play for in modern downhill racing now, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's um, everything's got really professional, and really tight, um, and and consistency is really hard to go by. And you're racing three races in a weekend now, so you've got a lot of racing um, throughout the year. And to be up there every weekend and every every round of it, it it's super hard. Um, you know, I've always said that that it, the team support is crucial. Not not when things are going well. You know, when when 
when a rider's got confidence and, and things are work, going his way, um, you know, having a, a strong team is, is for sure will be beneficial, but it, it's not going to really affect things. But as soon as a rider drops off that and, and lacks a little bit of confidence, he needs a platform to rebound off. And, and that's where a good team structure comes into play. Um, and that's super important. So um, that's something that I, I've I've really been working on. We, we've signed in quite a few, um, quite a few staff members already. And uh, so I'm excited with that. It's um, and and then again to to take advantage of it myself and and really uh, feel it out and and make sure it works as well as I think it works. You mentioned the R word, the dreaded retirement word, uh, way at the start of this conversation before I even mentioned it. This, <laughs> from the outside looking in, feels like a project that has really landed well with you. Is this lit a fire underneath you? Is this is this more than just go into a different team uh, yeah i think it has i think it has and more so once i've rode the bike you know i i, I had um were you were you nervous before you rode the bike because i always wonder that with, sure you know, with the pro game and that if you get on a bike that i mean i've heard people talk about in the past they got on the new bike tested it and went there's no way i'm making a winner out of this is it, is it a nerve-wracking process it is, it is. And and I was actually messaging a friend who's uh um he was messaging me the whole way through. How oh, how was the bike? You know, and I was like, Well, I've I've done one round, I mean it felt pretty good. How was it? Oh, so like, at the end of it I was just like, you know, Rob, actually I feel like I can win on it. And and that like I was excited after you know, I only did five runs on the first day on it and I was like, This is a bike I can win on. Um and, and that, you know, if there was a fire that was that was lit, this threw some petrol on it because it, it got me going. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's motivated me. I, I felt like twenty three. I had the pace. Uh, it wasn't like I lacked pace or, or lacked speed. I I lacked a bit of good luck, and um, there was just a lot that went wrong. And um, so yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to race. Um, I, I'm pretty excited for it. Glad to hear it. Greg, we've got some questions from the Hot Chili community members for you uh, before we wrap things up here. So first one, moving on to a new team or bike, what are the first things you prioritize, prioritize so that you settle into things quickly? What's the most important thing straight off the bat? Um, the most important thing on the bike is is just finding that um, finding that that setting that you can always go back to. So um, that baseline sitting is super important. Um, is that just and, suspension or is that tire pressure? Is everything else that goes with it? it there's, a, there's a bit of a combo that goes to it. Um, and I think that's, some, some, that's super important. And it's really based on feel. Um, but then again, when you've got a team that's, that's so enthusiastic about racing um, and you know they sit in, in this uh, engineering room with, that's got suspension dynos and everything else, you know, I was just chatting to the guys. One thing we don't have in mountain biking is a, is like a handlebar jig. You know, if you if you go through motor racing, um, they have this like jig that sits on on the triple clamp and, and your brakes and everything just fall into your setting and they tighten it up and, and there you go. And so I said to to Adrian, I was like, you know, this is something that I want in, in down. I've been wanting it for years. I think it's super important that when we travel or go somewhere that we'll want to swap a handlebar to a fresh set of handlebars, that they're in exactly the same position possible. So it was last week he he sent me a, a drawing of, of what he's designed for a, a handlebar jig, which is is so cool. So, you know, when, when the team is enthusiastic about things like that, it makes that baseline setting super easy to find. And that's what I found with testing, that they came in so prepared that um, – it, it was really easy for us to fine tune the bike to go quicker. And it almost felt like, you know, we weren't on the back foot in any way trying to find a setting because it all it had already been done prior to to being on the bike. And and that was new to me. Normally you go to a test session, you're trying to find this baseline setting, but with a strong team behind you, it's it's pretty easy to find. Okay, next up. Obviously, this was not an overnight decision for both parties, but will you have major input onto the development of the bike like you did at Santa Cruz? Oh, for sure. That's that's definitely one of my um uh one of the reasons why I've moved across. Um and uh you know these they're, they're, these guys are some some technical stuff. And um 
it, it's really cool. So yeah, I'll definitely be involved in the development of bikes, um, as well as looking at, at what's been built down the line. Um, but uh, I can tell you, I've I've seen some of the stuff, and and in fact, I've got one down in my garage, and it's it's really nice. Okay, can we expect to see some familiar veteran UCI World Cup faces on the team, or some talented younger riders? Yeah, the, this um, the team's definitely set up for the future. It's definitely set up for for an up and coming team. We are going to be looking for riders. You know, I'm, I'm not, as I said, I I have no pressure to to race. By the way, it's uh, you know the the when when moving across to Norco, they just said, well, you you stop racing when you feel like you want to stop. Um, and but you know we want you to direct this team and and focus on building the best team in the world with the fastest bike, and um, that was that was really a like one of the selling points. You know, I spoke to uh, Sean the CEO, and uh, he said, "Well, uh, you know, it's an important question. Know what 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 equipment's going to be on this bike? You know, if it's something I don't really like or, or want to be on, it, it's going to be hard to race faster than." And um, his his reply to me was. You choose what you feel is going to make the fastest bike. We want the fastest bike. You pick and choose. We're not going to align ourselves with anyone. It's all up to you. And I was like, well, that this guy's serious about about wanting to win races and, and build this team. So I definitely think that um, once we have this team established and 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 the riders are going to understand at, at what level we we want to um, commit to racing from the track side assistance to technical assistance. Um, I think we're gonna hopefully um, be able to track some riders. I want to. I, I want to I wanna have a World Cup winning team. I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of building that. Uh, whether it's twenty four with myself as a racer, or if it's in twenty five when we've got other racers in in replace of me, um, that's the goal, and, and that's what we're gonna aim for. And finally, then, what are your plans off the bike in 2024? Where can we expect to see you? What other projects can we follow Greg's involvement with? Well, we we've got a lot going on in 24. You know, we we're going to be doing some um, some ride days um, at some World Cup events. You know, we're working on some some projects with hot chili hot chili events. You know, there's there, there's a lot going on right now. So it's. Um, we can announce some more things through the platform. I mean, I think this is what's really cool about it is we've got this community now. Um, it's it's been quite a hectic start. There's obviously we had to wait for this news to break, but we're gonna be playing around a lot with this and, and sharing some some stuff with this community that probably won't go out anywhere else, or if it does, it'll be a bit later. But I feel like it's um, it's a way that we can be closer to to some of our, our really important fans. And um, yeah, so Hutchley have done a great job with this. So we're going to definitely be doing more, more things like this down the line. Greg, that is it. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I know that you get back to that new Norco. That is all from us. Don't forget the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup gets underway. You can see Greg and the rest of the stars find out how he gets on on his new Norco team in Fort William in Scotland on the first weekend of May. Stay tuned, of course, to the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup website as well for all the latest news on rider and team changes as and when we get them. Greg, thank you again for your time. It's been great to catch up. Hey, Rick, thanks for joining us and thanks for hosting today. It was a great chatting. No problem at all, Greg. Thank you very much and good luck this season. Thanks, Ruth. Ciao.